Hey everybody, Danny Watt here. Thanks for joining us. This week we're at a beautiful par three. How do you play your par threes better? How do you score better on par threes? Well, you need to avoid these three major mistakes. Now, I brought on, brought in, brought in, brought in, brought in, brought in, brought in Mr. Matt Fryer to help us help you stop making these three major mistakes in par threes so you can start lowering your scores. Looking forward to it. Good. It's going to be, you know, a real honour. Oh, it's going to be fun. So before I get into the video, look, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Just press that little bell button, next subscribe button, you get notified every time I release a video just like this one. Plus, remember, I put a free downloadable practice plan in the description box below. So whatever me and Matt discuss, you don't have to remember a thing. And of course, look, head over to Matt's channel. There's some amazing stuff over there. I'll put all the links in the description box below. Let's get started. Okay, so let's help you now go through a simple process that will help you shoot lower scores on the par threes. Now, stage number one, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be Matt's caddy today, right? We're gonna oh, start, yeah, <laughs> start with step number one. So the first thing is to assess the hole. Now, what conditions do you need to assess? Well, we've got, look, we've got the wind. Yeah, big factor. What? Might be up there one day, might not be, I think, it's never going to be the same, is it? No. We I mean, never play in the same conditions. Never, so assess the wind, right? So where is it coming from here? We've got the wind coming off the left-hand side here. And that's the first factor. The second factor is, is, where's the pin? Yeah. You know, right now we've got the pin, look, tucked right next to that bunker. Now, if we laser that, Mike. Yeah, I've got my laser on hand. A um, couple of distances. We've got 133 to cover this front bunker. Then the flag's at 147. And then the back of the green, wow, we've got another 30 yards back there. It's 177 back there. So you've got between the flag and the back of the green, 30 yards. From the flag to the bunker, we've got, do we got 12? Uh, yeah. 12 yards, yeah. right? So when you look at a flag, you think, oh, well, there's a flag, it's at 147. You might think, oh, well, let's go and pick out my 147 club, right? But the problem is, if you don't strike that, Where's it going to end up? There's going to be a lot of trouble. And then the next thing is the trouble as well. Yeah. Because where that flag is placed, there's a big slope off down to the right-hand side and there's a lateral water hazard running all the way up. So yeah. if I don't take that into account as well and just leak it a couple of yards, Absolutely. not going to be good. Looking at five, six maybe. Absolutely. So the first thing from this exercise is you've got the wind, you've got to take into consideration the wind. You've got to look at the pin position. Now look, there's 30 yards from the pin to the back of the green. So you have so much room beyond the flag. Mm. So thinking about the yardages here, if you go for something that's maybe like 155. Yeah, yeah, then if cover you don't, it. If you don't quite strike mm. it, you're gonna be naturally closer to, the, closer to the flag, but you're never gonna be over the back of the green. So taking that into consideration is yeah. a major, major factor. Yeah, 100%. There's one other thing here, isn't there, which is, Elevation, yeah, Elevation. We're, we've got slope on there. It, that's, it was 147, but it's actually playing 140 on the my slope for me. So yeah, exactly. So getting uh, maybe you make sure you've got a range finder. If you get range finders like the Precision Pro here with the slope on there, it will actually tell yeah. you that this hole is playing maybe five to six uh, yards lower. That can t you can take that into consideration too. So with that in mind, yeah, how do we then choose your club? Well, like you say, you. you gathered the information, haven't you, which yep. a lot of people don't do. They walk straight up onto the tee. Oh, yep. it's the eighth hole here at Dunbarney. I always hit seven iron. Seven iron's out of the bag, yep. that's it. But yep. we've just gone through the process. We've assessed what's actually happened. We yep. know that that's 147. We know that there's trouble right. We know that we've got loads of room back. Yep. I'm now gonna make that choice of the club that's actually gonna get me a little bit further. Yep. But I've also got to bring into the factor, how am I playing? How am I swinging? I've had seven holes to figure out is it, am I flushing it? Am I not? And that's mistake number two. You gotta find out, look, are you playing your A game, your B game, your C game? Now I don't care if you played amazing yesterday and last time you were on this hurl, your you seven, hole in one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your seven iron kind of nailed and ended up next to the flag. Sometimes, you know, if you're anything like me and, and, and probably Matt as well, you look, we don't always play our best. No. So if you're playing your A game, you know, what distance would you be hitting it? Now, in this situation here, all the trouble, like I say, short the green a little bit right. So you'll have, I want you to find out your yardages for your A, B, and C game. Matt, when you're playing your best, what club would you take to, say the 155? Yeah, so five? one, 155 is gonna be my nine iron. Yep. Yeah, if I absolutely flush it today. 
And how you, so right now, how are you playing? Uh, still working on a few things in the swing, not feeling 100% with it. Yep. So I'd probably prefer to hit my eight iron, knowing that I've got that buffer of the uh, extra yardage beyond the flag as well. I can, if I, if I catch one, yep. it's going to be on the green anyway. It'd just be 165 at the back. So it's Perfect. not end of the world. So what, what, what we've got to do, yeah. see me and Matt are getting a little bit older. And yep. one of the things is like, we're learning to swallow our egos a yeah. little bit now, right? Because normally, when I was a bit younger, it'd be like, I'm taking pitching wedge. Yeah, you know? and and even the flag going at it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with playing a little bit left here. I'd yeah. rather make a, a scrappy three hitting a little bit of an eight iron instead of a, you know, flushing a nine iron yep. and leaking it. Yep. Instead of making five going dead at the flag, trying to cover it, don't get it, runs into most the Most of the time, on most greens, anything in the middle of the green is your surface options. So mistake mm. number three, Come so you've selected, you've assessed the situation, you've selected your club. The third and final thing is you need to what? You need to execute. You need to execute it. So how did they go about so executing and actually putting all this into practice? Yeah, so if I just get rid of this for a moment, we've got the, the two clubs here. I've got nine iron and I've got eight iron. So we've, we know that we're gonna go with eight now. We've chosen that club. I've got to commit to this. Yep. There's no point me going through my routine now picking my target. I think a lot of people still wouldn't pick a target. Yep. They would look, you know, at the hollow oh, flags over there. I'll just aim yeah. out over there. Or even start getting quite mechanical still. And yeah. You start to forget about all that, start thinking about their swings. Exactly, yeah. You, you know that you're not hitting it your best, yep. but you've just got to pick a spot that you're going at it. And as you then come over into the shot, you know, for me, picking an intermediate target, it's a big one. Seeing that I would have something, I can just see a little old divot here for me that I'm going to align my club at. And then I'm just going to concentrate as I'm over it, thinking of, you know, a, a good ball flight in my mind, seeing the shot, and then just pull the trigger. Awesome. Don't stood over it thinking, well, is it the right club? Awesome. Should I hit nine? Well, we've done the talk. Yeah. He's assessed. He's ready. He's picked his club. Show the guys. How, how Are we going play? for it? Go for it. Oh, and it's the worst Come shot back. I could hit. Come back. It's actually okay. Just caught, okay. The, caught the trap well beyond the flag. But, so, didn't absolutely crush that one, but yeah. he chose enough club. Yeah. Because all the trouble is short and right. Now he chose the eight iron, which carried into yeah. the bunker, so he's in the safest spot. Anything short of that would have been down into the into the water. Yeah, it would have been dead with so, that nine iron. In, <laughs> so in summary, you have three things. Assess your environment, look at the wind, look at how you're playing, look at the elevation, look at where the flag is on the green. You know, do, you look at the, get the yardage at the back of the green, to the front of the green and the middle. Find out what is the safest way for you to play. Once you've done that, ask yourself this. Are you playing your A game, your B game and your C game? If you're anything like me, do your best to swallow that ego, right? <laughs> and, and choose the club that is gonna be the best club for you for a par three like this. And third and final thing, as Matt was saying brilliantly well there, learn to commit to the shot, cut out some of those swing thoughts, commit to picking your spot where you want it to go. You know you won't get it there all the time, but fully commit to it, and you're gonna start to see those scores tumbling down on par threes. So, I just want to say a massive thanks. Yeah, thanks for, for having Matt me on. coming on, on the channel. I really appreciate it. And remember, look, you never have to remember a thing. I'll put a free downloadable practice plan in the description box below covering all of these points. And of course, look, if this was one of your first videos, consider uh, joining the community by, pre by pressing that subscribe button and the bell. But until next week, have a great golfing week.